Welcome to an audacious devotion. You've cultivated some time, you've created some space to focus on God. At some point in your day, whether it's the beginning or not, I don't know, but well done. Because if you're watching this, it means that you've, you're you thinking about God for a portion of your day. Um, these devotions that we're doing are part of a series of devotions called This Audacious Life. It's part of what we're actually preaching in church on Sundays at the moment. Um, the Gospels are an eyewitness account to the audacious life that Jesus lived in this annual preaching series that comes back around. This year, we decided to look at it through a slightly different lens, a, a different way. And so we're using his life, Jesus' life, as the new filter to look at what our cultural distinctives are. For those of you that don't know, audacious life is made up of four things. Fierce determination, serious fun, fearless devotion and wild authenticity. And every year we remind, refresh and introduce those things to our church. Um, of course, we know that if you're part of our church, then you are the church. We're not talking about the building or the programme, but you. Anyway, from age 12 to age 30 in the Gospels, um, it's pretty silent in terms of what happened to Jesus. The only thing that we know for sure is that Jesus grew in that time in preparation for the three-year ministry that makes up the rest of the Gospels, the story. Um, he grew in four different ways. We see it in Luke chapter 2, verse 52. It kind of signs off his childhood. And until he kind of reappears as an adult, all we know is this. It says, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favour with God and favour with man. So Jesus grew in preparation for his audacious life in these ways. Number one, wisdom. That means intellectually, his thinking, his mentality, his attitude. Um, number two, stature. So he grew physically, which I guess is a given, but also think about the physical world, that the way he acted, the things he did. It says he grew in favour with God. So he grew spiritually in his relationship with Father God and he grew in favour with man. So he grew relationally in his relationship with others. So today for this devotion, I want to focus on the first one, wisdom. The Greek word for wisdom is Sophia, meaning intelligence, knowledge, learning, understanding and skill. So it's basically describing Jesus' internal world. If Jesus had to grow in this area, then so do we. We know that the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, For as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So it really matters how we think. This audacious life starts with a thought. So therefore, we need to grow in this area too. Anything significant in your life that's great started with a thought. You didn't just wake up on your wedding day and decide, oh, I'm going to get married. There was a thought a long time before that day. The birth of your children, they didn't just get delivered by stocks. There was a thought that happened one day earlier and that's how you ended up. And you could say that about any of the great things in your life. So how do we grow in how we think? Well, let's use those four cultural distinctives. Remember, fierce determination, wild authenticity, serious fun and fearless devotion. Let's lose, use them to answer the question, how do we grow in the way we think? Number one, fierce determination. So the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says these words, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So the Bible's teaching us here that we have a responsibility to do something with the thoughts that come into our minds. One of the best ways that we can do that, I'm talking about taking a thought captive, one of the best ways we can do that is by replacing that thought, any thought that comes into our heads that's against the things of God, we can replace it with a thought or a truth from his word. The Bible says in Isaiah that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so if we have a thought that's not in line with what God wants, we can re replace our thought with a God thought. And that's why we need to 
read the Bible. That's why doing this devotion is good. And that's why I keep quoting from scripture in this devotion. Because a good man, Jesus said in the Gospels, brings good things out of the good stored up in him. This audacious life starts with a thought. So with fierce determination, take every thought captive and replace it with his. Number two, wildly authentic. There's a reason why boxers, fighters, have a trainer in their corner. It's so that between rounds, when they're tired and considering throwing in the towel, they have more than just their own fierce determination to combat those thoughts and feelings. The coach can remind them of all that they've learned in training. He can tell them that there's more in them than they think and that they can keep going. In other words, their voice can be another voice in the boxer's head as opposed to just their own voice. So nobody knows our thoughts, but with some wild authenticity, we can tell someone our thoughts and therefore add their fierce determination to ours. This audacious life starts with a thought. So take a breath, ask the Holy Spirit to help you and give you some courage and then be wildly authentic with someone this week. Number three, seriously fun. In order to commit to being wildly authentic, we're going to have to get over ourselves. We're going to have to stop taking ourselves too seriously. We're going to have to stop believing our own press and our own Instagram profile, and our own Facebook page, and recognise that if we have too much concern over our reputation, then it's going to be a major barrier to us letting someone see the real us. In other words, a barrier to wild authenticity. This audacious life starts with a thought. So, seriously, get over yourself and have some fun. Learn to laugh at yourself. Give yourself a break. You are very important, but not that important. Not so important that you can't let someone else see the real you and add their fierce determination to yours. Number four, and the last thing before I let you get on with the rest of your day, is fearlessly devoted. The phrase entertaining the thought can really help us as we sign off this devotion today with that final culture point, fearless devotion. Imagine uh, entertaining your spouse or a loved one with a nice meal, nice candles, nice music, and then they go off to the bathroom. While they're away, someone else in the restaurant comes and sits down in their seat. Now, out of devotion to your loved one, you wouldn't entertain someone else. We would say, sorry, this seat is taken. Thoughts lead to feelings that lead to desires that lead to actions that when they're repeated lead to a new identity. We become what we do. When we entertain a thought, we invite that thought to sit down at the table and we woo that thought all the way from a thought to an identity, to an action and a being. And if that thought is not of God and you don't want to be what that thought represents, then out of fearless devotion to God, don't entertain the thought. This audacious life starts with a thought, so out of fearless devotion to God, entertain the right thoughts, and to the others, say, sorry, this seat is taken. The Bible puts it this way in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true or noble or right or pure or lovely or admirable or excellent or praiseworthy... Think about such things. In other words, entertain those thoughts. I really hope that this gives you something to think about today and also to pray about. I absolutely love you, Audacious Church. Have a fantastic day. God bless you.